It's like unto you, O Lord our God. Amongst the gods, who can compare with you? You're glorious in holiness. You're fearful in praises, always doing wonders. We honor you today, King of kings and Lord of lords. Eternal rock of ages, we adore you. The Holy One of Israel, we magnify you in this day. The shepherd of our souls, we bless you. The lion of the tribe of Judah, we hail you, O God. You're worthy and worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy of our worship. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy to be magnified. King eternal, King immortal, King invisible, we praise you. We bow our lives before you, almighty God. Jehovah El Shaddai, the many-breasted God, we worship you, O God. You deserve our worship, you deserve our praise. There's no God like you, everlasting Father. We bring the altars of our hearts to you today, O God. Almighty God, glorious God, majestic God, 
excellent God, beautiful beyond description. We worship you, Lord our God. Baris kaliyo talidesh. Ari basete le de boshka masi basete tele. Male balia tele de boshka. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to day 15 of our pursuit of God. We're really grateful to God for the last 14 days. His presence that has been with us every hour throughout the unbroken chain of worship. We're grateful for His grace, grateful for His love. And so this evening as we come together again to just continue in our journey of worship, I want to ask you to please lift your hearts up to God. Just, just present your heart, your altar to God this evening. Now God is really, really magnificent. He's awesome in all of His ways. You know, just before I came this evening, it just dropped in my spirit to just meditate on the love of God. How much God loves you and I, ladies and gentlemen. You know, every time you think about the love of God, it just causes your heart to almost bust open with gratitude and worship. And I want to invite you to do that for a minute or two as we just worship the King of Kings, our Maker, our Lord, our Master this evening. Just think about His love. Think about His love for a minute. Think about how much... This God loves you. I love the way the God himself says his in Exodus chapter 14. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Exodus chapter 34 in verse 14. He says, I'm a God who is passionate about you. That's how much God loves you and I, ladies and gentlemen. And then the psalmist goes on to describe his love by saying that the unfailing love of God, it reaches up to the heavens. Just to help us understand the magnitude of God. Of, of the love of God. Father, we bless you. And when you consider how much God loves you, ladies and gentlemen, the only response you and I can bring to Him is just a heart of worship. Just continue to lift up your heart to God. Can somebody say to God tonight, I love you, Lord. I love you. I really love you, Lord. But I know it's because you first loved me. If you didn't love me, where would I be? Lord, I love you. We worship you, God. The psalmist in Psalm 103, the Passion Translation, it actually is headed, Our Father's Love. And I'll read it as you continue to just contemplate the love of our God. It says, With my whole heart, with my whole life, and with my innermost being. I'll read that again. With my whole heart, with my whole life, and with my innermost being, I bow in wonder and love before you, the Holy God. Yahweh, you are my soul's celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness you've done for me? You kissed my heart with forgiveness in spite of all I've done. You've healed me inside and out from every disease, oh God. You've rescued me from hell and saved my life. You've crowned me with love and mercy. You satisfy me every, my every desire with good things. You've supercharged my life so that I soar again like a flying eagle in the sky. You're a God who makes things right giving justice to the defenseless. You unveiled to Moses your plans and showed Israel's sons what you could do. Lord, you are so kind and tender-hearted and so patient with people who fail you. Oh, how many times have we failed you, God? He says, your love is like a flooding river, overflowing its banks with kindness. You don't look at us only to find our faults, just so that you can hold a grudge against us. You may discipline us for our many sins, but never as much as we really deserve. Nor do you get even with us for what we've done. Higher than the highest heavens, that's how high your tender mercy extends. 
Greater than the grandeur of heaven above is the greatness of your loyal love. Towering over all, who fear you and bow down before you. Farther than from a sunrise to a sunset, that's how far you removed our guilt from us. The same way a loving father feels towards his children, that's but a sample of your tender feeling towards us, your beloved children who live in awe of you. You know all about us inside and out. You are mindful that we're made from dust. Our days are so few and our momentary beauty so swiftly fades away. Then all of a sudden we're gone like grass clippings blown away in a gust of wind, taken away to our appointment with death, leaving nothing to show that we were here. But Lord, your endless love stretches from one eternity to the other, unbroken and unrelenting toward those who fear you and those who bow face down in awe of you. Your faithfulness to keep every gracious promise you've made passes from parents to children to grandchildren and beyond. You are faithful to all those who follow your ways and keep your word. Yahweh has established his throne in heaven. His kingdom rules the entire universe. Psalmist says, so bless the Lord all his messengers of power. For you are his mighty heroes who listen intently to the voice of his word to do it. Bless and praise the Lord, you mighty warriors, ministers who serve him well and fulfill his desires. Then he concludes and says, I will bless and praise the Lord with my whole heart. Let all his works throughout the earth, wherever his dominion stretches, let everything bless the Lord. Let everything bless the Lord. Let everyone bless the Lord. Anyone who has the breath of God in them, let them bless the Lord. Anyone who appreciates the love of God, let them bless the Lord. Anyone who considers the mercies of God, let them bless the Lord. He says, I will bless the Lord with my whole heart, with my innermost being. Oh God, can someone bless the Lord? Bless the Lord. Oh, we bless you, God. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. Receive the incense of our worship. We lift our hearts to you, Almighty God. How can I describe a God I can describe? Oh How can I explain a love?
And who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Yes, Lord. Much less love and beauty. Yes, Lord. Come on, choir sing. Nothing in this world could satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you are. Jesus, you're the kind. Like you, Lord, in all the earth. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? You're much less in your love. You're beautiful. Much less love and beauty and less worth. And nothing in this world could satisfy. Nothing in this world could satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you are, you are, you are. Jesus, you are. Ah! 
Today I'm going to be bringing today's reflection on God. I think of God. I think there is grace. Or more about God. There is grace. When big. Bigger than what we can handle. I went into the Bible to kind of look at what the meaning, what the definition of grace is. And I came up with a few things. It's also not getting what you deserve. When I looked into the Bible. I also saw grace when it came to compassion. That the fact that Jesus Christ came to be with us, God decided these human beings, if I don't intervene, they will never come to know me. He decided to create a path through the human beings to come to know him. Up between us. Uh, verse 8 to 10 says in the NIV version for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves it is the gift of God not by works so that no one can boast for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance as our way of life would you believe that it's not because you or I was, were more faithful than the other. It's literally because God just decided, let me create a path for us to actually come, come back to him. The wages of sin is death, and yet he decided to create a path for us. He decided to give us the grace to come back to him. Another Bible verse that strikes me when I think of grace in the Bible is Psalm 30, verse 5 which says, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. I'm going to tell you three aspects of grace that I've experienced in my life, and hopefully you can, it resonates with you as well. The first is mercy and favor when I didn't deserve it. The second is grace to do more than I'm capable of, or more than I thought I would be capable of. And the third is the grace to extend mercy even when others don't deserve it. When I was at university, um, in my final year, I had a few challenges with um, some of my coursework and I had to ask, ask for an extension on my dissertation. And the way the university worked, if you were late by literally two seconds, a minute, your marks were deducted by about five to 10%. I'd already gotten an extension and that was approved. But on the day I was supposed to hand in work, I was still typing away. Let's say the deadline was 4 p.m. at maybe, I don't know, 3.55. I was still typing away, trying to print, and I had to run from one end of the campus to the other. And as I was running, I was like, okay, God, by the time I get there, I'm going to be late, definitely. But I really would appreciate it if they don't dock my marks. And I just thought to myself, okay, maybe by the time I run there, there might be a queue, and then I can just slip into the queue, and it would be fine. No one would notice that I was late. But then I got there, and the place was empty. And I was like, God, just God help. Um, you know, sometimes when you get there where you can't, you don't even know what to pray anymore. You can't imagine how God is going to do it. You're just like, God, just help. Um, I got to the um, booth, and I was about to hand in my coursework. And they're like, oh, wasn't this due a few weeks ago? I said, yes, but I have an extension. And they're like, oh, where's your extension slip? I'd forgotten it, and that was going to cause a problem. But the lady who granted the extension, who is normally never in that office, decided that day to come into the door. And she saw me at the booth. She's like, oh, all right, yes. I remember you have an extension. Don't worry, um, pass it through. And even with that, I didn't have to, I didn't lose any marks or anything. Now, for some people, it might not seem like that big a deal. But for me, it meant the difference between, um, between different levels of grades. So for me, that was God showing me grace, even when I didn't deserve it, because I'd already gotten the extension. I shouldn't have had to ask for extra time, but still, God gave me the grace to hand it in. The next is about capacity. Um, so this, this person, me, who had just finished um, university, had a turbulent start to my career, but things started to go well. I realized at some point that um, there's a family that my family um, know very well in Zimbabwe, and... I realized two of their children had dropped out of school because their parents didn't have any more money to pay for it, the school fees, and they had younger ones that had to go to school as well. 
And this didn't sit well with me because I thought, <laughs> I don't want a situation where I look in the future and then I realize that these guys are suffering the way that they're, that these guys' children will be suffering the way that they're suffering because nobody intervened. Then a the thought came to me, but what about you? And I was like, God, um, I've only just started my career. There's no, I, I don't know if I, I can't afford necessarily to take them all the way to university and through university. But God said, you know what, just start. And so I called their dad and told them, you know what, okay, I'm going to take them on financially. Don't worry about them. Um, like take care of the rest sort of thing. And even all through, there are many times when it was a slim chance that got us through. And even for me, I look back and I think, what audacity to think that you could actually help <laughs> students who are many miles away um, to get into, like to finish with their education and get into university. Um, but it was possible. And even when it came time for them to go to university, God provided and they were able to go, you know. And that for me just showed me that sometimes when God tells you, just do it. Realize that there is grace. Then there's another aspect of extending grace. So for me, this is my example of trying to be more Christ-like in a sense. Um, since those two students, I've had other students that I've mentored and sponsored. And there was one student in particular who was just not pulling his weight. And he wasn't, doing, he wasn't putting in the effort into his schoolwork as, I had imagined, as, I had, as we had agreed, as he was supposed to. And at some point, many people said, you know what, let this guy go. There are other people who are more deserving, who would do better with the opportunity. He's not appreciating it, appreciating it, let him go. But something in me couldn't let this kid go because I realized God had been so good to me. There are many times when I've had, with God, second, third, fifth, tenth chances. Could I now let this person go just because they've messed up once, twice maybe? I felt I didn't feel like I could let this person go, so I didn't. And to God's glory, he's made it into university now, and he's continuing on his journey. Again, for me, I realized even in that, there is grace. Because sometimes to be able to do the things, be Christ-like and do the things that God would have us do, it's not always easy, but realize there is grace. Um, so these are some, of, some personal examples of things that have happened in my life when I think of God, when I think of his grace. And more and more, day by day, he keeps showing me, he keeps showing me that he is there and he, his grace is just sufficient. But there's a story in the Bible I wanted to share with you about grace and also realizing how much God has done for us and in so doing to show love to one another uh, as well. I'll paraphrase it, but it's in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21 to 35. And it's a story of a master or a king um, who was owed some money by a servant, and he was doing his accounts. He went to meet the servant and said, you owe me this much, pay up. And the servant started begging, please don't throw me into jail. Please, I just need more time. Just help, let me, let me go. And the king, and the king or the, the master agreed and let him go. But that same servant went back and found a servant who owed him way less than he owed the king. But instead, he decided, that, and when this, that servant pled, pled to him and said, please don't put me in jail, give me more time, I'll find this money for you. The, guy, the, present, the um, servant didn't agree and instead threw that guy in jail. Other servants heard about this and then went to the king and said, this is what has happened. If this person who you showed so much mercy, so much grace, decided not to do um, the same for somebody else. And the, the master goes to this servant, you're very wicked. I forgave you this much. And you couldn't forgive somebody who wronged you this much. And for that, that, that person was put in jail. For me, it just when I read that scripture, it's just a reminder that God has been so gracious and kind to us. And we ought to show love to one another, even in situations where it's difficult. But then also realize that there is grace. Even when it's difficult, even when we're not sure how things will go, we ought to know that there is grace for God to pull us through. There is grace for us to even stand strong knowing that God is there with us. That's my reflection for today.
joy. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God sing all my days all my life you have been faithful yes Lord all my life all my
And ladies and gentlemen, we're presenting to you an opportunity to worship the Lord with your tithes and your offerings. And it's worship. And I'll read from the Bible. The ways to give, ladies and gentlemen, will come up on your screens. If you're in the worship center, you may use the envelopes and the boxes are at the right hand or the left. Wherever you are around the world, please take advantage of this moment. I'll read from Revelations chapter 5 and I'll start from verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the, eld and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever and the four beasts said amen and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Let us present our offerings before the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, your provision has preceded you. God will be kind.
Let's declare it all over the world from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sea. Your name is to be Ali Can someone declare that with all of their heart from the rising of to the setting of the sin. Your name is to be hallowed, O God. Is to be Eli Majere Bushara Basotolorobosh Eri Basangelere Bushara. 
One more time from the rising. From the rising of the sun. Yeah. Setting of the sea. Your name is to be hallowed. Go on, let someone begin to hallow the name of God. We worship your God. We worship your God. We worship your God. We lift your name, Magade Bala Majekarabasa Teleboso, Oria Telerebo, Adonai, in Maya Majekerebosoto, Ekatota Lebosu Turubus, Ebase Labota Ladabashan. You are worthy of our worship, O God. We hail you, Malaba Jelebo Sanda. We worship you, Maki Telebo, Maribo Se Telebo Sataya Bajelebos, Aribo Te Telebo Sotolobo. Day and night, night and day, let the incense rise. Day and night. Night and day, let the rain rise. That's what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen. Day and night, night and day, let the rain rise. Day and night, night and day, let the rain rise. Day and night, night and day, let the rain Hallelujah. That's what we determined to do when we started 14 days ago. Today is day 15. And by God's grace, He has sustained us. Our determination, ladies and gentlemen, as we go into this last week, is that day and night, every second, every minute, every hour, every day, Till Monday the 27th, by God's grace, at 7 p.m., the incense of our worship will continue to be lifted up to God. And I say that to say, in this last week, we're on the last stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Can we purpose to give it all that is in us? That's why the psalmist says that I will bless the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my innermost being. So in this next seven days, ladies and gentlemen, let's just purpose to commit time to the worship of God. How many people would say that the presence of God was here tonight? It was so tangible, ladies and gentlemen. And all over, all over the world at home, I'm sure you felt the presence of God as we lifted up the incense of worship. Can I ask you to please appreciate the minstrels, please? God bless you. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. So just to remind ourselves, just in case there's someone who's just joining, we meet 7 to 9 p.m. every evening as we've just done. And then after 9, we'll switch over to our 22 hours of virtual worship. Uh, but just, just worshiping God continuously until we meet again tomorrow by God's grace at 7 p.m. And then remember, at the beginning of every watch, we have a time of exhortation, extolling the virtues of God. It will be led by any one of our leaders. Please don't forget, you're welcome to come into the worship center any time of the day and night if you just want to stay in the presence of God. You're also welcome to go in the chapel during the hours of exhortation when, um, when, when the leaders are leading each one of the watches. And we're, we're just trusting that by the end of this season, none of our lives will remain the same. You know why, ladies and gentlemen? Because 
the presence of God will dwell permanently on your altar because your sacrifice of worship has been pleasing to God. So please, once again, let's just push in this last week as we go, as we continue our time of worship. In your few seconds, we're going to switch over to the watch in the chapel. And I just wanted to say, God bless you guys. God bless you, all of you at home. And uh, let's just keep worshiping God. You guys that were here today, God bless you. And let's switch over to the worship in the chapel. Have a wonderful evening, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you.